Welcome to season two of Gloved. Um, looking to improve always. We're building as we go, hoping to get some good insights, get some good information out there. We're very lucky today. Um, from a personal point of view, I'm very excited. We've got a very good friend of mine um, from off the field, but also played plenty of football with him on the field. He's inspired me, he helped me feel good. He, he welcomed me to this city. So really happy to welcome Mike Richards. Thanks for having us, mate. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> I remember when we first met, obviously we'll hear, you know, you two talk about your first time, but I remember when we first met, mm -hmm. Joe said, um, so, you know, when I first met Joe and he said, uh, he said I've, got a, I've got a friend and uh, yeah, so I'm thinking, obviously, he's got lots of friends. He lives next door but one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just down the road. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I remember trundling around next door but one and uh, boom, boom, I boom. I think I remember that. I think it might have been the time uh, of Bayern Munich uh, game, you know, when I pulled my hamstring. Yeah. And I think you remember he just said, I've got a guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots of, well, there's just so much to you, mate, but then obviously with the injuries. And, and I'd only just really started getting to know Jamie and yeah. realising the benefits of... My, my hope and pray was that like it could lift, lift in your mind would help your body. I think I was just going through all sorts, you know, after I had my, my injuries and whatnot. Oh. Uh, you're almost trying too hard to, to, to yeah. get back in at you and, like, and your mind's not clear, you know, you know before, we'll, we'll speak about that later, but with, early on in your career, you can just go and enjoy it with a freedom, yeah. with, with no, no restrictions. But when you've, you've done well, people ex expect the expectations so much higher. Uh, and at that point, whether it's my mind, body, whatever, it just couldn't deal with it. I, I, I remember literally, you know, he, he said five minutes, go and see him for five minutes, and an hour and a half later. <laughs> I oh, but that must happen with you all the time. Like, <laughs> I, I remember saying to you, yeah. I can feel your, your, your tension and your stress. I remember, I remember, and I'm thinking, I'm not surprised he's got injuries because, you know, what many don't realise is that this has a huge impact on, on your yeah. body. You know, if you're thinking about carrying load and yeah. we're going to get into that, but just great to, great to have you. No, great. No, it's great to be here. Uh, if I can share a little bit of my experience to, to help any, you know, aspiring footballer, it'd be, it'd be great. I think you'd be surprised that it's not just footballers, you know, from mums, from, uh, I remember a, a sports marketing executive saying, you know, this is helping me because they're into sports and they want to know how you guys think. Mm. So it can be applied outside of, outside of that, which you're kind of outside of football now as well. Yeah, um, obviously I've joined, joined the BBC now, mm -hmm. which is, for me, it was like amazing because you, when that point, I knew about two, three years ago it was over. Yeah. You know, if I'm being serious, you always have that little bit that wants to, you know, can I still do it? And you know me, my character I am, I didn't want to give up. Yeah. Um, but having this BBC opportunity to still speak about football, still be around football, uh, while also working for Man City as ambassador, it's just, honestly, it's, it's a perfect role yeah. that I, I could have wished for after football because I know how hard it is for, for footballers. We live in this sort of bubble where you've got to have the nicest house, the best car, and you've got to perform every Saturday. But people don't understand what it takes to get to that journey. They only see one thing. They don't see the other side as well. Um, and I think a lot of footballers generally are lying to themselves. They're living in some facade. It's not even, it's not real. They're not being real with them themselves. You know what I mean? You might have a bad game on the weekend, but you know you've played bad, but someone's known you played well. If you look at footballers generally, have a lot of people around them who are just yes, yes men. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, which I had at the beginning of my career, people, oh, Mikey, you're great, or you played well today. And, you know, I know I've not played well, but they're making me feel I've, I've played well. Do you know what I mean? And that way you're never going to improve whether it's off the field or on the field. You need people who are going to be honest and just genuine with you. And that's what I want to spread now because I've been, been in that position where you know, I've won the Premier League, but I've been in a position where I'm not even including in the in the, in the squad. Oh. And it's the worst possible feeling you can ever have as a footballer. 
we're, we're going deep already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's retirement, okay? Yes, yeah. But let's spin it back because, you know, you've, you've, as you described, a bit of a gypsy. Born in... Birmingham. But I wasn't born in Birmingham. Well, I was born in Birmingham, but my mum was going to a party when she's nine months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was born in Birmingham, but I was still in Leeds. Chapel Town. Chapel Town. Yeah. Um, still got Yorkshire in you though, haven't you? you, you... I, I, I've still got the Yorkshire accent, but I come out of Manchester. Work, but I moved over to Manchester when I was 15, didn't I? And I'm oh. 31 now. I've only just moved back Yorkshire way. So it's like half and half. So you went from Chapel Town mm -hmm. in the academy there? So I went from we... uh, Chapel Town. Uh, I played for a local team called Farsi Celtic. Right. Um, Spent a couple years there, then I linked up with a team called Sa uh, San Paulo, it's like Brazilian soccer schools. Um, and from there I was playing at Leeds City Boys, got picked up Leeds City Boys at 11. And then from when I was 11, so Oldham and Leeds City Boys together, and then went from Oldham to, to City at 14. And then in Diggs? Yeah, I stayed in um, Diggs probably about three times a week. Uh, it was in Gatley. Then I was in Timpley, then I was in Cheadle, then I was in um, Sale. So I'd, I was trying to find the right spot, like they moved you around to see where you feel most comfortable. Yeah. And then the final digs, it was at Gatley, where I'd been a couple of times. Uh, it was a priest family. I don't know if you remember them. No, I didn't, uh, I didn't Paul didn't Priest know that. and Karen Priest. Um, he man. was a massive part of the early part of my career because he kept me on the straight and narrow. Mm. And he was a he was a mad city fan as well. Straightish. <laughs> no, 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 let, let me finish. Until Ooh. until I moved out of Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that period from 14, 15, 16, 17, I moved out of like 17 and a half, 18. So you're getting in the team at that point, aren't you? So this yeah, this time I was I was in the team when I was in Diggs. Yeah. And then when, obviously, when you, uh, you, you play first team, you want to get your own house and whatnot. Um, and when I went into my own house, that's when, you know, the partying and the... I, mean, I, could never, I remember when I first came out, I could never keep up with what, what you were. <laughs> like one minute you were like, with your, yeah, I want to look after them, family. Then you're in your car. Like, I just didn't know what was going on. Same guy the whole time, but I just yeah. didn't know what was going on. Yeah, it was, it was weird, really, because obviously I was travelling. Sometimes I'd go back to, to Leeds. Then I'd come back to my digs, stay at my digs, then I'd have my own place. Just trying to... The A3, mate. Was the A3, remember, remember <laughs> yeah. the A3? I used to rest you in the So, yeah, I remember it was after the Youth Cup final, which we lost. There was a brand new A3 parked outside, and I was just buzzing. And you had a mini, didn't you? Yeah. You fitted in a mini. <laughs> <laughs> I, I moved to City, was like, oh, absolutely loving life. I went to get like, um, is it a Mercedes compressor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't I remember. know how the world worked. Got an insurance, it was like, Three times more than the car actually cost was the insurance. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't know that I'm getting one of them then. Yeah. Um, and I just remember, remember after a training session, we was, was, was had a race home. Yeah. And he beat me, he beat me, and he said, <laughs> I was devastated. Um, but yeah, then looking back to them early times, it was just, it was so good because you just had freedom to do what you, you wanted to do. Yeah. You know, how many times did after training we'd, just go for some food or yeah. go out and we're just, there was no pressure at all. Is, is that because there was no social media today? Is that, you know, somebody, somebody listening would probably go, you know, well, what was different then than today? You know, you were Michael Richards, Man City, yeah. Joe Hart, Man City, but what's different? I think it was a different Man City though. Yeah. Do you okay. know what I mean? It was, a, it was a really different Man City. We was a struggling team yeah. in the Premier League, like, weren't we? You, like you were just like a, sh a shining light. The team we had obviously like the hardcore, like the Dunnies of yeah. this world. Distan. Yeah, Distan. Even like Weaves. Weaver, people like yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? Like really important, but it was different. It was just, it was, it was just like really positive. But in not in like you, we all know there's two different. Areas. There's like, there's like a feel good factor, and then there's the top. Yeah. And you can't have a feel good factor at the top because okay. the top's too clinical. It's yeah. too cutthroat. It's too ruthless. Ruthless. Isn't yeah. It? So like it's, it's a different, it's a different. You were in the feel good factor yeah. when you were coming through. I think as well though, because we had 
a lot of young players. So we had me, Harty, Nadem, Stephen Island, Michael, Michael Johnson, yeah. Daniel Sturridge, yeah. even Ishmael yeah, Miller was Ish. playing, Kelvin or two. Like we had a, a Shay really, Logan. Shay <laughs> Logan. We had a good group. So it was yeah. because there's only Harty really who was bought. The rest of us come through the academy. We already had that banter from 14, 15 going up into the... Mm. And we were all... We was tight-knit because we wanted... the. You, you, it was difficult with me and Nadam. You know, I yeah. admit that because we was vying for the same position. But everyone else, we always wanted them. You know, if Harty was on the bench, the lads would yeah. be buzzing. And back then, like, we was on... I'm not going to say peanuts, we're on good money, but not yeah. like it is now. Yeah. So if we even got on the, um, on yeah. the bench, yeah, the, bo- the bonuses changed <laughs> the weekend. It was like, woo, we've gone from, like, not yeah. McDonald's, maybe a KFC <laughs> or to, to a San Carlos re- real quick with yeah. a, you know, wings. Uh, uh, <laughs> with a wings. 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 It was wings back there, wasn't it? I remember that. Yeah. Um, so it was just them, them little things that made, like, meant the world to all us, lot. You know, we, we just, we just, we just loved it. It was, it was, it was great times. I remember being in a in an England squad when I was in at Shrewsbury, and you were in it. We did a tournament together. Yeah, oh, under 19s. Yeah, yeah. And like Meeks was just a name, like he was just a huge name playing for Man City. Even like your legendary coming on the scene, scoring against Villa, uh, swearing. Yeah. yeah. Just like, phew, I was like, phew. like it was mad for me being from Shrewsbury. Mm. really close and like I came to City and I didn't know how I was going to get treated and yeah. you guys were just class man. No, it was, so we, we, we just like, we, we welcomed Artie because we knew, not because we knew how good he was, but because in the changing room, you judge people about how they are, how the character is. If you're one of the lads, there's mm. no problem. Yeah. If you're like having yourself or trying to be the big man, like the changing room will just, will just, cha- will just change on you re- re- really quick. Yeah. Art come in. Like he was, he was quite shy at the beginning because obviously I was just come, buzzing, mate. Yeah, I was, he come, I was he just from, <laughs> couldn't believe what was going on. <laughs> he come from Shrewsbury. Yeah. But then you know, I think where you earn the most respect though is when you go outside. Yeah. And when you're training, you and everyone was like, "Wow, unbelievable!" Got a bargain because I think remember like it was six hundred grand we pay. You know, when you win the Premier League, sometimes you can be. A bit. It was impossible. I didn't, yeah, I'd never even seen myself play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't we didn't know what to to expect. But when when we seen him train, and he was all he was already at the levels that he needed to be. You know what I mean? We could tell it was going to be a season or two before he was going to be number one. Um, I think it was David James at the time. Was it either David James? James. Then he went. Isaacson came in. Isaacson. And we've played. You know. I'm, I'm yeah. Um, um, bench, Chelsea away. Was it Chelsea away? Is that yeah. the first? Drogba got out. Like, uh, <laughs> Drogba was a joke. Yeah, it was. It was unbelievable. But we knew straight away that it was going to fit in because he was a humble lad, and he, he obviously he was an unbelievable player. You know, talent back then. So you just knew, and we sort of just hit it off. And we had fun as well. Yeah, we we enjoyed it. We, it was, it was, no, was not like I said. There was no pressure. We just go there and. And it just, uh, Manchester at that time, it was buzzing, wasn't it? So. But you're playing for England now. Yeah. 18, McLaren, like, believed in you big, didn't he? Yeah, he just. Rightfully so. You, I, I remember, I couldn't believe it. Like, my mate was on a phone box when I was driving into Manchester. <laughs> yeah. With Adidas. Yeah, the hype was, the hype back then was, it, it was, was, huge, it, was it was massive. Oh, so 06 was World Cup year, wasn't it? Just after yeah, it. Yeah, right. I ju- yeah, but I just missed out on that. Because Walcott got called into that, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? So that was, that was Sven, wasn't it? That was Sven, yeah. That was Sven. We were you close to getting involved in that? I, there was conversations. I, were, I, I it, didn't know you was, I was thought of, but it wasn't, I was never going to... Had you even done 21s at this point? Uh, Did you yes, do 21s? Yes, I played 21s. So, so for you at Shrewsbury, you, you, know, you were playing League 2. two. And you were already in the Premier League. Yeah. Right. But it, it never really mattered that because when you go, I was still playing on the 19s yeah. and, and the, the level wasn't that different. I think that's what people need to understand as a professional. Someone could be playing at a top Premier League club, might be getting here minutes, but what they're missing out is they're not getting the experience. They're not playing the game. so. You know, a lot of them players who went to 19s never even got even into a first team squad. Yeah. Never mind, you know, playing. Yeah. But because there was at a top club, there was getting picked. But that's where I think the coaching and stuff is missed out. Like, 
you're going with it, you're playing with, you're going with the, the seniors and um, the first team, but you're never coming off the bench, uh, you're never playing, while Harty was playing every week for Shrewsbury, playing men's football, you know, getting bashed about every single week. Bash. So when he come to the to play in a top level, it was, he'd already had that experience. Isn't this the argument for the players that go on, on loan or they want to go out on loan? And, you know, you've got this at your club right now mm -hmm. is you've got one of the most talented youngsters mm -hmm. in the country, Phil Foden. Um, you know, I sit down with lots of players who they want to go out on loan and get that experience of men's yeah. football. Mm -hmm. um, with Phil Foden, he's an exceptional talent, isn't he? He, he is going to get games whereas yeah. Some, some of the young players are just happy to say they play for Man City. Mm. You know, they've got pictures on the Instagram, you know, they've got the nicest cars, they're earning good money. And I don't want to be disrespectful to them, but they think they've made it already. Do you know what I mean? And it's only really Foden who's probably going to get a chance within the current squad because he's the only one who's probably showing the signs that he could yeah, play at that, at that level. I think he's a special case. I don't think yeah. he needs to go out on loan. People say, oh, yeah, it's holding him back, getting minutes here. Like, he's really rated. Yeah, he? It's no joke. He's really rated. Mm -hmm. The players rate him, obviously, which is important. The manager rates him. But, like, let's not be stupid. It's not like he's going to start week in, week out yeah, at Man City. Like, exactly. You have to be the best of the best. And he could potentially be. Mm -hmm. And I think he's only going to get better doing what he's doing. If he went somewhere else, yeah. imagine if he had a bad ten, like, loan somewhere yeah he has Don't, got to be careful yeah, yeah he needs yeah. to be looked after so i think they're doing the right thing there i mean do you know him i no i don't, I don't know him i um, remember him when he was he was ball i i seen him i was like no ball, you. Ball, boy. ball boy yeah for three years I, I don't, just I a don't, nice I, guy just a really nice kid who just wants to do well but a kid away from the the fold and the the other players you have to go out on loan you have to get some experience because it, it, it's tough, you know, and even like before, no disrespect, people used to frown upon the championship, but now the championship players going for 20 million or 15 million, it, the, 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 it's getting better. Um, so any advice to young players, is just go out and, and, and test yourself. If you're going to be a good player anyway, then it should be easier going down the leagues. Yeah, yeah, physically it might be difficult if you're only young, but the experience is, is, is amazing that you can, you can have for sure. Like to influences mix, talking from a very young age, yeah. I think it was pretty apparent that you were gonna, you were gonna be an important player from a young. Like it's not you didn't have a normal uprising if you like. Yeah. Like England eighteen, but that if you're gonna start playing for England when you're eighteen and playing the Premier League, that yeah. process starts a long time. That's yeah. That's from the age of twelve onwards where people start picking up. Yeah. You've obviously got you've got your family, you've got your friends that you grew up with, but you're not a kid anymore at twelve, yeah. thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You're becoming. Uh, a potential, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, poten a potential whatever. Some people see you as a potential, like mm -hmm. someone that they're really pleased for. They yeah. want to help, but some people see you as someone they're going to make some money out of. Yeah. Some people, you know what it's like. It's like it's mad the people that come into your life and then, yeah, for and sure. It, and it's difficult to filter. So you've got a good sense. You said you know you talk about Chapel Town. You're from a you're, yeah. you're from an upbringing of where you need to kind of watch watch your back and be aware of people. Yeah, Ch I think Chapel Town in, in in Leeds probably made me the, the person I am today, in terms of the hard work. In yeah. in terms of like normally people in Chapel Town don't really get chances. Mm. And when they do get chances, they normally mess them up. Yeah. You know, and that's just me being real. Yeah, yeah. That I've got to, I've got to be real because yeah. I'm not the only good footballer from Chapel Town. There's loads, but there was the drugs, there was the partying, you know, there was the, the violence and all that. Yeah, I'm, I'm from that. People see me smiling and think I'm from like Old Edge or something. That's one of the big things I you know what with mean? you. Like one of my biggest things that I think is class about you is you, you are you are a big nice personality but there's been moments in our careers when yeah. stuff's really happened yeah and that's the first thing you see. when I when when I see you well up I'm like oh shit yeah and then the first thing you say don't don't think this ain't gonna happen yeah and then I'm like oh shit this person doesn't know what's gonna this happen. is what me everyone thinks I'm like but you hold you, you nice. hold it together but then at the same time no no one's getting, yeah no, no I'm one, not. no one's getting anything <laughs> there's the the real 
it's like there's Micah the footballer yeah. and there's Micah yeah. the person and what people see is Micah the footballer. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm emotional though, you know that. Like because I I'm own I'm so nice to people and, and try to see the best in people always. And then when someone doesn't show me that back, I take take it to heart. You know me, yeah. you've seen how many times in the changing room or outside of football, I've, I've lost my, my mind. And rightly, like, I've seen yeah. plenty of times when you've done well not to. Yeah, of course. I've, when I've seen it brewing, because I've known you so well, I'm like, oh no. Mm. I just do my best to try to Yeah, and it's, you know, from coming from Chapel Town, my dad is my biggest inspiration because to keep me on, on the straight and narrow, mm. you know, I've, I've got cousins who are in prison for bad things, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep it real, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to shy away from anything, um, but I had something to be able to get me out of the environment I was in. Yeah. And my dad wasn't going to let me go down any other road apart from focus. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and he, he must have known that from, from like I say, yeah. we're just kids at the end of the day, but you, to be a special talent at 18, yeah. someone knows that from 12, 11, 12 years old. Yeah, because I was always, he could see I had a good heart, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you're physically blessed as well. Yeah, I will, yeah. You're, you're too, you're too <laughs> yeah. strong for anyone. <laughs> you're too fast. You, you can jump too high. Physically, that was ticked at about 12 years old. And it was just about the rest. Yeah. Um, it was weird because I was, growing up, I was actually a striker. But yeah. like Joe said, I was, I was stronger and faster. So all I had to do is kick the ball over the top. <laughs> like, shank it into the net. Yeah. <laughs> My shooting was, wasn't the greatest, but when he just hit it hard, it goes in. Yeah. So like when you're that young, you think you're a, you're a good striker. Yeah. So at Oldham, I dropped back into like, imagine I was a number 10. I imagine playing yeah, Dean was a striker as well though, I right? know, yeah. Uh, you guys got shifted back there. I actually played with uh, Danny Welbeck's brother, Wayne, Did you? up front for Oldham. So he was like up there. It was like, they used to call us Cole and York and all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then when I moved to, to Man City, it was a big change because I'm not just saying it, I was the worst player. Right. Because the, the step up from Oldham mm. to Man City was like ridiculous. But Man City have always been top, haven't they? They've they always had the best academies. Always yeah. top. Yeah. So I, I found myself like, ooh, I'm no longer the best player. Mm. And that's when I think the real work started when I went to Man City. Right. Because we had Alex Gibson, you, you, might, you would have known him, but you wouldn't have known of him. Yeah, Frankie Bunn, yeah. Paul Power. And, and they would, unless you, if you didn't pr improve, you, you, you weren't allowed to go in. It's like, and back then we trained uh, morning and afternoon. And if you've not improved by six months, then, you know, they're saying, well, you've got no chance of going up there. They'd just be brutally honest. Like nowadays, you couldn't get away with that honesty. They were, no. well, they were well known for bringing players through, weren't they? They, they were the best, Jim Cassell. If not the best, yeah. Um, bringing, bringing, if you look at all the players that have come through Man City, yeah. If you go to the training ground, there's like a, the plaques of all yeah. the players that, are, that have come through. And um, I was sad to see them go because the job that they've done was absolutely unbelievable. Um, not saying that the, the people that are doing it now are, are not the same, but yeah. to, to get that many, so many players through was, was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, that was when the real work started because I was, I was miles off the pace, as, as I would say. And I'd gone from playing striker to number 10 to like defensive midfielder, just go around and tackle people. Yeah. I remember you just said, just uh, head it and run fast. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Don't do anything else, just head it and run fast. What was it that the coaches saw in you? What, what advice did they give to you? I think they, they seen that I was willing to learn. You know, I think that's what my dad installed in, into me. Don't think you're, you're good enough because there's always someone better. Uh, Piercy believed in you as well, and didn't he? Yeah, Piercy. Because I was sort of like an old school player where a lot of the players now are technically nice, you know, can turn on it. I just used to jump for it, like Harty said, and head it. <laughs> uh, just run run and tackle people. I just used to love tackling. Yeah, you were mad aggressive. Um, but I, I, did, I didn't, I never played defence. So I didn't, like people in my early career, people say, oh, well, he was, he's out of position and that. But... The, the first time I'd played as a centre-back was in um, a youth cup, youth cup match, and that was under 
on the 16s, on the, on the 16s and the 17s? 17. Yeah. So that's the only time I'd actually played defence. So who was talking to you then? What was Jim Cassell saying? What was, what was Lincoln? What yeah, was saying? yeah J- Jim Cassell was just saying, you've got the raw ability to, to play at a level. Only you will know what level you're going to play out through your hard work. What were you thinking? Did you, did you know that like, men's football was around the corner for you? Or- I was the, the worst player and then I managed to, by 16, I turned it round to being one of the best players. Yeah. I was like, hmm. I can, you know, maybe there is a chance, but I didn't really... I thought to be a, a professional footballer, it would have been a lot hard. I only, it was only so easy for me because, like you said, Piercy believed in me. Yeah. He, he gave me that belief. And then going back, my dad believed in me and Jim Cassell just said to me, if you, if you improve these little areas and want to improve, like the world's your oyster, but he never really said, oh, you'd be playing Premier League or you'd be playing champ. He just said, just, just believe in yourself and see how far it takes you. So two people believed in you. Yeah. Somebody else said, you know, the world's your oyster. So they've given you. Yeah. How important is it for coaches today? What, you know, if, what, what are you saying to coaches? What would you say to a coach? It's, di- it's different because the, the modern day player is different to when we was coming through. Like, you've seen Craig Bellamy um, get sacked because he's apparently shouted at a player. Mm-hmm. You've seen um, Kevin McDonald at Aston Villa just being let go because uh, I don't know what happened, or, but there was an altercation with a player. But back when I was coming through, they, Asa Hartford he used to say he used to swear at me every single day. If you don't do this, there's no chance of getting the first team. But I think we just thought that was the way. I think the the modern day player is a bit more precious. So I would go down the route of giving them confidence, maybe showing them videos of what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong, um, and just review it. You know, over like six months or a year. See if they're still making them same mistakes. If they're not, maybe speak to the parents or someone who they they get on with and who they trust and believe in. Maybe it's an agent, whether it's parents, whoever it may be, and just do it that way because I think the old school way is turning the players the other way. You don't look at player power nowadays. I think that's not just the old school way in football. I think that's life. Yeah. I think that's in general with, Mm -hmm. if you said teenagers across the board Mm -hmm. today, Back then was preparing us mentally for the real world. Oh. You know what I mean? It's not just football, it's like, not everything in life is going to be nice and dandy, is it? Oh. You're going to be tight, like, there's times where things are not going to go the way you want them to go. Who, who, who did you look up to? Who was the footballer that you thought, that's who I want to be, that's who I want to be like? Who at City did you see? Who in the world game? Because, like, mm. I know you played centre-half, when you were playing right-back, like, yeah. you were... You were going to be the best in the world. Yeah, right? and yeah. There was no stopping you. There's only one thing that stopped that from happening, and that's unique. So. Yeah. I think I looked up to, to Patrick Vieira yeah. growing up because I was like the um, defensive midfielder when I, when I was going through. And just the way he was, he, you know, his impact on the game, not just on the field, but he had something about his stature yeah. and he, the way he worked hard and... Obviously, he was playing in a, in a great team at the time. But that's someone who I looked up to. So when he came to City, I was, I was actually starstruck. Yeah. And I, I don't I, remember I, me I, ever being like that with anyone. I remember he signed when I was on loan at Birmingham and I was like, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Power. And then I came mm-hmm. and like, you'd spent a good year with him or whatever. And yeah. then I was like, just couldn't wait to meet him. And obviously, you know what he's like. And I seen you two just going at each other. And I was like, <laughs> you'd got comfy with him by then. <laughs> yeah, and it was, and just... he was like, he was top. He was just... And do you know what I like about how you just went, you said, and his stature. Yeah. And I, and I think anybody who's listening to this or watching this, it's like you've not said he's technically good, yeah. he's this. Mm. It's some, there was something about him. and He just, he just had it in an abundance, didn't he, really? Um, even when he used to have that little bit of ruckus with, with Roy Keane, yeah. you're just waiting for the next one who's going to come out on top. Office, it? Yeah. it was just inspirational character as well. And, and to meet him and to see how he studies the game now. Obviously, he's a coach at Nice and he's yeah. been at um, New York City. But, 
you know, we, we always used to take the mick out of him saying, oh, you oh, did is tackle people. Yeah. But he actually had, you know, flair and skill and score goals and all that stuff. Um, so meeting someone like that, it was, a, it was a real inspiration for me. What's interesting, what you've just said there is access. And we've talked about who do you have access to. Mm-hmm. Um, you've mentioned one of the greats. Yeah. And I've spoken to young players at City who have had access mm-hmm. to Patrick Vieira when he was a coach yeah. and never asked him any questions. Yeah, I, you know, sometimes, though, I, I think it's hard for, for young ones because sometimes they're petrified. You know, you know you imagine, like, Vieira is going to have everyone coming up to him all, all, all day and then... What, he, what the kid doesn't know is he'd, we'd be happy to share his advice oh, and yes. his experience. But, you know, sometimes you just don't want to, you just want to leave him alone, don't you? You just see him as this, you know, figure and you've just got, a, you know, a picture in your head. And you, sometimes you're just a bit nervous to, to approach that. Right. But that's, that's the point. And I think anybody listening to this, whether that's, you know, you're a youngster or you're an adult, mm. that's, the, that's the key thing. Mm. Number one, he'd love yeah. to share yeah. knowledge, mm. um, and I'm sure you would. You, you, mm-hmm. you know, you've always said if you know a young player. Um, I remember, I remember asking you, um, you know, do the players, the young players, come and ask you at training? And you said we'd love to, but they never, they never do. So that's the. What first- do you think that? Why, why do you think that is? Though? Do you think that's because they see you? Because sometimes, the, you know, like we're a young player. Um, you're not really allowed to be seen to be talking to the the senior players or the first team coaching staff. I think that's unwritten, and I think that's the in in my experience that's the young player or person. So I'm going to take this outside of football. Yeah. That's the young person assuming mm. and making up the story. Yeah. I can't go and ask. And if you don't ask. I think the person that asks gets that information and you get that information from the goalkeeper, from the right back, from Mm. the best, one of the best number eights. Mm. And, you know, if take that as, you know, outside of football, if you ask the question, people who've been there really do want to pass on Mm. to others. They really do. It's not, oh, just see me on this pedestal. What about um, you were in England squad at 18? Yeah. Or set maybe in 17, I don't know. Who, what, when you walked in that squad, what? Because like you, were, you were at the top level for you, but there were, when you get in that England squad, you realise there's another level. There's the, at that time, there's the Chelsea, there's the Man United, yeah. there's, the, there's the Champions League winners, there's the league winners, which obviously wasn't happening at the time at sea. It was easy for me. I think I got nominated for Player of the Year. I think only come second to Steven Gerrard because... There was no pressure on me. Yeah. Like I was, I, w- I remember some England games, I wouldn't play well, and then you pick up a paper and I'm getting eights and nines. Yeah. It's whole you part of the, the, build, the build up, in it? The, 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 the people want to build you up, then to, to, to bring you down, you know what I mean? Um, but going in that, that, that dressing room, obviously, when you're playing with the likes of John Terry, oh. Rio Ferdinand, Steve, Rooney, Stevie, well Steve, Stevie, Stevie Gerrard, Along with David Silva, he's the best player I've ever played with. When, when I first went, he was doing things that I've, I've never seen mm. a player do before. Like, like what? Just scoring from 30 yards, passing, but on a sixpence like, and one twos round here. And he smashed everything he did he, as well. He, he? He, was the best, he, he, he was the best all-rounder for me. He could do absolutely everything. So when I seen that, it was a, a calibre above. Because I was in City and I was, I was playing in the Premier League, but no respect to City back then, we had a average side, just a good Premier League side, didn't yeah. we? Nothing, nothing more than that. Like, if we stayed up, we was happy with that, with the youngsters that we had coming through and whatnot. Who was right backs? Was it Gaz Neville at the time? So, was he coming towards the end? When, when, I, when I first got in, it, it was Gary Neville, but a little bit Wes Brown, a yeah. mm-hmm. little bit Glenn Johnson. Yeah. Um, but when I scored, like the goal, you mentioned the goal, I did that on the back of my shirt, like Richards. But then, for some reason, because I was at City and he was at United, I remember the headline, you'll never get your shirt back. Yeah. Like, so it's come like a disrespect thing to, to Gary Neville. So 
like from going and just having a, a nice game, enjoying the environment. Having a great time, mate. And then <laughs> it just like it just flipped on me like you'll never get. And then I've got United fans like texting me and like, who do you think you are? And I'm just like, it was no respect to him. I'm just like, I'm just buzzing to be in 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 the fold. You know what I mean? Um, That's probably the first sign you've cracked it when, yeah. when you're getting come for. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that probably now, is. Mate. Yeah, you've had your fun. <laughs> you've had your yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was just enjoying every minute of it. I didn't really think too much about. Obviously, I was buzzing to be in and around it, but I didn't check. It's, it, it's just normal strides, mate. Yeah, it yeah. Was like, like we've talked about it. It was mm-hmm. like Oldham, City, City yeah. first team, England. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, like, don't yeah. wrong. I'm still nice and yeah, sound, but like yeah, better steps. No, is that not everyone does? No? The problem though, when I when I started getting the England side, when I'd come back to to City and not playing well, yeah, some get I'd get. That's when it's like oh. That's when I could see that like, it was just brewing a little bit, you know, that this pressure, all this expectance from, from people was yeah, just... Yeah, there was just, the big yeah. Adidas contract. Yeah, well. Adidas, like, I, like I you joked, said... I, mate, but like being on the phone, but like that, that weren't normal back then, not yeah, for anyone. Adidas, then there was... Was it Mars? Did you do Mars? No, I didn't do Mars. I did something with a Shay. There was Shaw, something with Shaw. Do you feel then that you had to perform what was what was the mentality? My mentality was wasn't was I just go out and, and just play? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's only the only re, the, the the real time when it changed is when we didn't get when we didn't qualify for the Euros. Yeah, that's when it really changed. What, what was pressure for you? What did if we were in your body? What was what what was pressure? So pressure, I would never like going on to the to to the field. Well, that was all right for me because he just, I, I backed myself, you know, like I was young, I was confident, I backed myself to, to come up against anyone and I'd, you know, I'd, I'd fancy myself, that's the confidence I had. But when we um, didn't qualify, it was Nicole Crankchild, I remember him for, yeah, for he was at Spurs. Croatia, wasn't it? So he come on, he, he come from the left yeah. and come in and I was probably, I don't know, a couple of yards off him and he shot and Scott Carson like yeah. made the mistake. So he got the brunt of the, the, the obviously. Yeah. Um, but then people was coming out, oh, he's not got closer to him, man. Yeah. This is why he can't play for England. He's, he's too young. He's not got the experience. And that's when things really started changing for me. Because you believe, did you believe them? Well, you, you just start questioning yourself because you can get away with like when you're in Manchester, like if you're not playing, if you've not had a few bad games, you can like brush it on. It's only Manchester Evening News, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's only it's only the local. But when you play for England, it's everywhere. And the end was Manchester Evening News was always good with me, you know what I mean? Even if I played bad, they, they won't overdo it. Mm. But as soon as you don't play well on the England stage, you're just getting pelters from everywhere. Yeah. And that's when it was like, like this is real now. This that is, affected that generation or a hundred percent. The players, the, the, the experienced players, were going on and not performing. Look at that team. Oh, no. it, it, that team, compared to the team last couple of years, is, no disrespect, is way better than that team, but there must be something that was stopping them from, Clicking. you know. Belief. Yeah. Expectation. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So where, where did Sean fit in? Sean Mike Phillips. You are close with Sean. Sean was like a shining light from City, went from Chelsea. Yeah, Sean was obviously, he was the one that everyone looked up to because he yeah. was the first one from the academy to really hit the, the levels yeah. of England. He went to Chelsea for 24 million, I think it was, and City was in a, in a, in a, in a, like a, a difficult time with financial, so that... You must have been thinking, like, that was probably your path. Like, we, all, we never knew what was going to happen. Yeah, that, so yeah, of course. That was probably going to be your path, like... A, it, do yeah. well at City, then a big move. Yeah, because Chelsea was interested in the time with Mourinho. Yeah. But I didn't want to leave City. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I, I stayed there. I, I genuinely didn't want to leave because I, because I just enjoyed it. Everything was maybe just easy. You've said that a few times, you know. Yeah. Like, it was easy staying at, at home. I was in Manchester. Family was back in Leeds, back and forth. Mm. Great dressing room. Great lads. So The club loved you. Yeah, you know, if you go to Chelsea... And it didn't quite work out. Like, you're in London. I'm going to London at 19. Oh. I'm, you know, come on. The bright lights. Yeah. The bright lights. You know what London's like, come on. 
The bright light is at 19. Yeah. We can't... For me... That was a great decision, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and because the move with Sean didn't work out because I had so many other great players, like, he was getting... He only used, you know, 20 minutes here, 20 yeah. minutes there. And I, I didn't want to... I didn't want to be... If I wanted to go there, I wanted to know I was going to be number one. But at 19, you can't, you can't be promised you're going to be number one. I was going to say, are you looking for guarantees there? And I was just happy because I'd come through the academy at Man City. I'd always been treated well at Man City. Yeah. And it was a good club. We, had, we, had a, we had a good changing room and a good... It, yeah. was a, it, was a, it was a good club to be at. In fact, like, we, were, we were like the smaller team in Manchester. Yeah. And it was just like a, like a real kind of like... Whatever, they were just weren't asked, were they? The, the fans like, always wanted the young ones to do yeah, well, didn't they? they? They weren't bothered, like, it wasn't like, whether you won the league or not, it wasn't a problem, it was just like, give it a go. Give it a go, as long as you give 100%, yeah. they, at, that, at that stage, they was happy with that. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, never, I never really wanted to, to leave City, to be honest, because we just, we had so much good times and things were going so well, why, why would I want to change that? Mm-hmm. Players who've had the biggest impact on you, Aside from Patrick, yes. Who did you learn from the most? And competition. What was? What did you feel about competition? For 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 places. So we've got three things here. Mm-hmm. Um, which player inspired you the most? Wh- tell us about competition. Mm-hmm. What that means to you, mm-hmm. and the importance of relationships in the back four. Yeah, the, the one I'd have to look to, I looked up to the most was probably Richard Dunn, because he was club captain. He'd won player of the year four times in a row. Um, on, on, on the field, he was just unbelievable. He was a beast, wasn't he? he? I remember a couple of times where he was ill the day before, and he'd always just managed to get through it. He could be struggling with ankle injury, hamstring injury, whatever injury, shoulder injury. He'd make sure... He was going to play on, on the Saturday and he, he taught me a lot because the way my body was, I was quite, because I was quite fast and quite strong, like I used to get a load of nicks and a lot of bumps and stuff like that and sometimes I didn't want to play but I knew the level that I had to be at if I wanted to make it and he, he made me understand that, well, you've got to play no matter what, as long as you can physically run up and down, even if you're not at 100%, even if you're at 75%, you've got to go out and there and play. And he was, a, he was a massive inspiration for me. And then playing alongside him was, 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 was unbelievable. I think coming to competition. What about Jolien with that, you know, say learning about your body? Yeah. He looked like he was important. Jolien had a, had a bad injury when he was, what, 19, 20? Yeah. Um, and it was similar to, to, to the way my knee was. But fortunate for Jolien, his knee didn't swell. Yeah. So, but mine swelled, which was the annoying thing. And um, when it come down to pre-match and recovery and in the game, Jolien's by far the best yeah. at that, along with probably James Milner. Um, he'd be on the bike beforehand. He'd be stretching before the game, um, doing all his, his glute band work. Um, he'd make sure he'd, he'd warm up. He'd, after the warm up, he'd be like, he'd like he'd play the game. Yeah. Um, and then in the game, he was just he he wasn't f- physically blessed with pace, but he was very strong. Or he could read the game very well, yeah. and he was always in the right position. Uh, it helped he was left footed as well, so it just balanced it off a little bit as well. Mm. But he was he was definitely one who I learned of how to to look after my. My name because mean, like both big strong boys. Yeah, but like, you're not just you're not just your standard athletes. Yeah, you're, not, you're absolutely not like I, I. You know me. You know how hard, what I do in the gym. Like I'm never going to put any weight yeah. on. I'm ne- there's never really any stress gone through me. Yeah, of course. You're an absolute power athlete. Yeah, that's a, that's a different that's a different athlete to the, your standard footballer. Mm. So like you had to be treated differently, and you had to treat yourself differently. But you, you're obviously very naturally blessed, which is a great thing because yeah. you, we all, you know, we joked what you, you could eat and do and you could <laughs> yeah. still be the fastest, strongest, most ripped guy. But would you have, would you have been more professional from an early age? Oh, 100%. If, if you were to do it again? 100%. From, from 18, from when I first got in, from 18 to probably 23, yeah. my preparation was 
was not. I didn't really pick up that many. It was only my knee that yeah. really bothered me. But I was going out eating Chinese, yeah, Ma- McDonald's, going out the weekend, enjoying my life. And because I never put weight on, because I was like physically blessed. You just like, got stronger. I, I, it didn't I, make yeah, any sense. I didn't. I didn't seem I was doing anything wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because. I was all I, I took I took advantage of the fact that I was always gonna play. Yeah. Hundred percent. So no matter if what what was happening at that time, I was gonna be on the team sheet. So I took advantage of that. You didn't have the competition then. I always had competition, but in in the coach's eyes at that time, mm-hmm. I was the best that they had available. Right. So I'm not gonna say I never had competition because Nader Manua was he got in the team before me, and I only got into the team because he got injured. Mm. Danny Mills had an, an, an Ian uh, operation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, on, I only got in by luck at the start. It's just when I got in there, they couldn't get back in. Mm. And because Nadem's one of my, my good friends, and we was vying for center half and right back. Mm. But Distant and Dunny at the time was probably nailed on. So it was out of me and Nadem for, for, for right back. And Pierce believed in me more than he believed in Nadem. Not necessarily saying I was a better player back then, because all through the academy, Nadem was the golden boy. Yeah, he, was. he was. He was strongest, fastest. Um, he played in all sorts of positions. And he, he was the golden boy coming through. But it was just, it just that's what football's about. That Just that one manager or that little bit of luck. Yeah who believes in you and then propel me on to, to go and play. So, yeah, I, I definitely took advantage of, of the situation that I was going to be. But one. even though you were, like, obviously not living the, the perfect life, like, yeah. you, you were still the fittest, still the strong. Like, there was, do you know what I mean? There yeah. was not a drop of fat on you. So it, it was weird, yeah. Yeah, technically, you weren't doing anything wrong. My, my, knee, my knee would have been better, 100%. Because if you go from playing a 90 minute game to going out on, on a Saturday with, an ad, with the lads, Having having drinks, dancing in the in, in the club because I'm not. I've seen you dancing. I've <laughs> seen some dance on some injuries. Like. I was like this guy, and I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I went out and I was dancing. I was in I was in enjoying life. But looking back, because when I first got my, my injury, I, I didn't know it was gonna be as, as serious. Mm. But when when I got operation, I thought it was fixed then. Yeah, it wasn't. It's, it's, uh, it was just getting worse. Yeah, it's kind of anticipating into the future, yeah. potentially what what could happen and yeah. what do you need to do to prevent it. But I appreciate the honesty because I think, I think there's, um, I, I, you know, I don't care what level that you play at, mm. I think that for anyone listening to say about that injury, my knee would have been 100% better mm. had I have not made those decisions. I think that's, I think that's dynamite for somebody pursuing a professional sport career. I, I think it's important, like, as someone so physically blessed, it's important that, like, you can't, just not taking stuff for granted, do you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I've got that, that sound, yeah. so I just need to work on that. You know, it needs to be everything together it and needs then it to all be becomes a, one. I think that the, the higher you go up, though, the the more you realise that. Yeah. You know, you've played abroad. Yeah. I've played abroad. When I went to, over to, to Florence, literally the way in you every day, they're telling you what to eat, when you can eat it. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that with the change of management. You know, when the, it was more like a foreign manager. Yes. Like Sven, then into Roberto. And yeah. then it was like, whoa, this is getting a bit different. It's, getting, it's getting different. And I think the higher you got, they go up, you've got to be, you've got to be sacrificed. You've got to make sacrifices no matter what profession you do. Yeah. But the higher you go up, the harder it, it is. And the more, going back to the competition, the competition that I had was with, with Zabaleta. Yeah. I, I, I've gone from 17, always playing, mm-hmm. to, ooh, we're getting rotated a little bit here. What, what's going, what's, what's happening here? It's mad though, because Zabba weren't, Zabba weren't signed as a, as a polished, you know what I mean? Like this I, is what I mean, people, people don't even know what he was signed yeah, as. Yeah, when Man City make a signing now, they're signing a 60 million pound player. Yeah. Zabba was what, about five, six mil? Centre mid from Espanyol. If, if that, he was defensive mid who could go forward yeah. now, and, now and then. Um, nice guy, spoke a bit of English, cool, okay. Yeah. Well, and then, like you say. And then, the yeah, I was, like I said, I was used to, used to always starting and then 
Like, injuries started creeping up here and there. Mm-hmm. Always managed to get back into the team. Oh. Uh, so who's in charge here, Robert? So, no, so it was Mark Hughes. Yeah, Mark right. Hughes is the attack. Little, yeah, rotation. Oh, we're going to, no problem. He played a lot of games. And that was fine. He slotted in. Zabala was doing okay, nothing great this time. Move on to like Mancini era. Now he wants two, you know, top players for each position. So, starting the season, this, that, and the other, started getting hamstring injuries. And every time Zaba played, he'd be man of the match. So I'm thinking here, oof, some pressure here. What's going on? So all that season, uh, I think it's a season when we uh, when we won the FA Cup. So I played all the FA Cup games, yeah. but then apart from the Man United one, uh, semi-final, big game. Oh, it's huge. Zabaleta played unbelievable again. Yeah. Luckily, Mancini kept his faith with me. So he played you? Yeah, he played with me. He played me in the final and we won, which was a big injustice to, to, to Zabaleta because he'd been unbelievable. How did he react to that? Every player's disappointed, aren't they? Oh. They can't say you're not. But he handled it with class. And the following season now is the, 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 the Premier League season when we won. And then we qualified for the Champions League first time. Yeah, the yeah, it, it, that. yeah, that was that was that, cool. That was, I'm, I, I thought winning the FA Cup was amazing. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, people sort of people sort of brushed it under the carpet. Like we went to the state. We had like we did a tour. We had a stadium, stadium rocking. It was, you know, when people mention, oh yeah, City's season started in 2012 when, when we won the first Premier League. I'm like the FA Cup was equally yeah. important. Like. Blood, sweat, and tears went into yeah. that. Isn't that the one where you swore on? But I did, yeah, I did. I did. The first one was Aston Villa. That was when you were seventeen. Seventeen, but I swore again on TV. On TV and the FA Cup as well. Did you? I really did, yeah. Someone's like, oh, honestly. <laughs> but you know that that I think the players who played in that. We, we started to see the team was getting better. Players were. I've got a picture of him. I'm yeah. literally I'm pumping yeah. your head off. It was just because. It felt like we, we've we've done it, you know what I mean? We've we've not just you know we've gone from like being 17, 18, partying every week, oh. just being happy to play. It's actually we've won something now. It was just amazing, wasn't uh, it? Amazing feeling. And then go forward to the season after we won the Premier League. So yeah. Mancini sat me down before and said, "It's a big season. We want to go for a lot of competitions. We're gonna rotate. We're gonna be in Champions League." Yeah. Um, we think Zabaleta is a bit more tactically now than you. He's played in Europe before, whatever. He's not really played in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. Um, so he would predominantly play the Champions League games and I'd play the league games, oh. which was, was which was wicked. Um, so I played a lot, of, a lot of games in that in that season, but about, I think, six games before the end of the season, I got a hamstring injury. And Zabaleta played every single game, including the, the, the big game, the, yeah. the QPR. Like the best, the best game in the club's history. Did he play against United as well? Yeah, you were right. You were right for that one. Were Which United? A six-one? No, one-nil. He played the one-nil. Yeah. He played the one important game then. That was. So nice. I'm so like I've gone from like playing all these games to I've become a bench player. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. like, but not 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 bench player, but I'm, I find myself not playing the the important games. You like, um, and then the last six games of that season, I was out hamstring. I was thinking out for. I think three or four weeks, something like that. And Zabaleta played all the games. I come on in some of the games. I come on and get yeah. Newcastle. I mm-hmm. uh, made an important block in that game. Yeah, that was massive, man. Um, but yeah, Zaba, it was, it was, that's when it started to turn. Like, Zaba's done so well here. You can't really leave him out. Oh. And that's when my head was just, my head was gone. In, in total honesty, because all this time I'd been number one and now, I'm, I'm second place. So you're having to deal with... No, it, it wasn't failure. I'd played 30 odd games winning the Premier League. That's not failure by any... But the QPR game, like, in my, the, the night before, I, I'm thinking, right, whenever we, we, we... If he wants to be a bit more shore it up, for some reason, he'd play Zabletta. Oh. If he wanted full to attack, he'd play me and Kolarov or maybe me and Clichy. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking against QPR, I'm definitely playing here, 100%. We're like, we need, like, QPR are not the best. He wants us to, you know, score goals and whatnot. 
and I was on the bench. When did you find out? When did you guys find out when? So normally we'd find out probably like, uh, like pre-match, wasn't it? Yeah, you name late. Wasn't but because I was so close with Mancini, I knew the night before. Yeah. Yeah, you two had a mad relationship. Yeah, it was a weird, it was like, it was like father and son relationship. You, him and Mario were like, there was, that, was, that was a separate relationship. <laughs> yeah. Why was that then? Why, why? You know, it's weird though, because at start, he didn't like me. Mm. Where it was like, we, 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 we was coming, he first come in and we, we, wasn't, we wasn't great, was we? We, we, we just, mm. we hadn't, you know what it was? Because over in Italy, tactically, they're so much better. Even if they're not as good a players, they yeah, know what they're doing. I think they're a lot more snob. Yeah, well, I don't it's their the way or no way, isn't it? Snobbery, I don't know if it's the right word, but mm. like, they look down on England as just a bunch of lunatics running around. Running around, around. yeah, yep. that was it. So you see, we had potential, but he didn't really, he was like, he was not sure. So I, I remember him, he was like dragging me from right to left, be here, be there, what are you doing? So I'm like, what are you doing? So when we're like, I'm arguing with him because you know what I'm like. Yeah. I'm like, I'm arguing, like, what are you doing? And he's like, frigging his arms over. Yeah. And then he called me in his office. He said, you've got ability, but you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And after that, it started, relationships started getting, getting better and better. Um, you, I thought he was good. When he was good, he was good. And obviously it, it turned a bit sour at the end, whatever. That's mm, life, that's mm, football. But, but he played us, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he played like, no, he no me, matter. He bought me back, mate, from Birmingham. I, th I, thought, I thought it was all over. I was looking to sign somewhere else. Yeah. He whipped me back and took shit out. That was huge. No, but that season on Birmingham was unbelievable though, wasn't it? Yeah, that was fun. Unbelievable.